Hey everybody, it's I Wushok with another video on building your characters. Sorry it's been a short while since I made my how to make a DPS build video. Holidays got the best of me and I definitely got lazy. But I did want to also make sure that this was researched well, so I wasn't just sitting there doing nothing. Um, I want to make sure that I did enough research that it was useful. I do always play DPS, so I wanted to clear up any information I wasn't 100% sure about before I made this video, because baits and tanks are the most powerful builds in the game. If you want to check out the DPS build guide, check out my other video. It will get you caught up to speed real quick. Before I get into building it though, why do I play DPS if tanks and baits are stronger? I mean, simply put, they're also more expensive to make. Free to play players struggle with those builds. Um, generally to make an end game bait or tank, you need multiple ancients along with the correct accessory, runes, and enchants. DPS are a little more intermixable. Also, I, I, I've got a uh, saying that I've said before that I think exemplifies it. A good DPS will deal a ton of damage, and a meh DPS will still deal a lot of damage. A good bait or tank is nearly immortal, but a meh bait or tank is dead. So while the ceiling is much higher, the floor is much lower. That being said, I did recently make both Ascarium and Clover, and I'm currently up tiering some sets to make a tank build. I'll talk about that one later in the video, but let's stop wasting time and get right to it. So first off, what's the difference between a bait and a tank? A bait has the lowest health on your team. They take the attack weakest hits and stack up on damage mitigation to keep your DPS from being touched. A tank is kind of the opposite. They still have that crazy mitigation, but they focus on having the highest health so they can take multiple hits back to back and still have that same healing damage. Because everything scales off power, so they're still going to have quite a bit of damage because they can completely ignore speed. A bait's going to have more power since they have to put less stats into health, but a tank is more than likely to be able to take care of a few enemies before they die. Going into your modifiers, we've talked about it. You have to stick with a specific one. Unlike your DPS modifiers, you cannot proc multiple defensive ones with the exception of damage reduction and block. This means that like, while a DPS can empower and dual strike and critical and just reach crazy heights, a tank cannot evade a hit and absorb that same hit. So you want to get as close to max as possible on a specific modifier before you start in anything else. Now most of these modifiers are going to have a, a hard cap at 75%, the block can get to 100. That means if you go into a stat like evade, you want to get as close to 75% as possible before moving on to something else. That's what makes Witchum so strong as a set, and I'll go over that later on, talking about tier 19 sets, and even though it was from tier 17. With the introduction of elemental damage, damage reduction kind of took a step back because it's not as effective, and block became the, the king. Um, but starting in tier 17, block kind of got knocked off in favor of evade, thanks to that Witchum set I just mentioned. Other modifiers such as cleanse are important to have, if possible, to reduce the number of times you'll get hit with shock or combust, and barrier will stop those multi-hit DPS in their tracks. In my opinion, these are great to have, but they are also secondary to straight mitigation of damage because you can still evade those same things. Let's go ahead and pull up a tank. We'll pull up the one that I've been building. This is a, a tank with a slightly lower health, but it gives you the idea. Stat distribution is just way easier than it is on DPS. You don't have to really balance. DPS involves having your speed and your strength and your health all be really similar to like what they need to be. There's a specific range you want to be in. But for tanks and baits, that's not the case. For baits, you want to have enough stamina to survive a, a hit or two in case your mitigation fails, but be below your DPS. For tanks, you want the most health on your team. On this build, you'll see that I've got 18,000 health, which is... I, realistically, as a tank, it should be closer to 22,000, but I'm using a DPS mount right now that has a lot in speed, so I can't really go too heavy into health right now. So, your health, though, in tier 19, you want about 11,000 for baits, and like I said, 20,000 for tanks. Everything else is going to go straight into power. Speed absolutely does not matter. Get as low a speed as possible. You'll see mine's 9.2,000, and that is explicitly because I have a amount that gives me 6400 speed. I, I'm working on getting rid of that mount, but I don't have a better one yet. Nothing scales off of speed for a tank or a bait at all. 
So th that's how you want your stats. You want your health to be where it needs to be, no speed, and everything else into power. So let's get into some sets. I'm not sure if I actually have some of these sets, but we'll look for them. First one that I want to talk about is a, is a Obliterian. I do not have that one. I'll pull it up on the screen here. Let me just go ahead and pull that up. Okay. So this one is found in Tier 7 Orlag World Boss. It's not strong now, but at the time it was the set to have. This set was introduced when damage reduction was the one and only modifier that was worth having. Combine it with an accessory like Abominable Trophy and you hit damage reduction that just straight up was not possible before. It lets the teammates behind you take less damage and also deal 5% more damage while you get a 15% damage reduction. This is massively outclassed later, but it is worth mentioning because of how good it was at the time and just understanding the history of where the tanks and baits came from. The next set to talk about is going to be Say White. It's a tier 14 Titan world boss set. You know, it's world boss all over. Uh, this gave you some team enrage, so your few attacks that you had would be much stronger. We talked about enrage in our modifier videos. You also get 20% water resistance, which is damage reduction for water, which became 45% if you were below 70% health, and then a flat 20% block. You can already see how much stronger this is than uh, the previous set, and it isn't even the strongest. If you pair this with an accessory like Neutrino, you can hit max block fairly easily. But because Perkunas came out in the very next tier, in the same world boss, it got outclassed very quickly. This set gives 5% redirect, 20% block if you have the highest health on your team, and then the big bonus. You get 30% barrier to stop DPS players in their track, and a 30% chance to heal yourself and cleanse yourself whenever you get hit. The barrier and heal slash cleanse used to be tied together, which made it insane. It, it made the full barrier dungeon 4 actually completely soloable with this set. Um, it did get unlinked because of how strong it was, and now there's separate procs, but it does still remain as a really good set. Then finally we have Witcham. And this is one that I actually have on I can show you. Witcham is a tier 17 uh, Trials and Gauntlet, and it's part of what's known as the Unholy Trinity, which is the build that I have on right now. In my opinion, this is the absolute best set in the game, is an entirely overpowered. Like, it's broken. It's just, it's broken. <laughs> there's, there's no other way to say it. For the first bonus, you get a mini extort. You get 15% chance to attack the closest enemy for 40% and shield yourself for 40% when you evade. And you're gonna get to evade a lot. It, it, it's just so strong. At the third, the uh, three set bonus, you're gonna get to double your enchant bonuses, which is also extremely strong. I'll show my enchants here in a little bit to show you just how strong that is. And then at the four bonus, once you have the full set, you get 30% flat evade and minus 30% SP regeneration. The SP regen to me really isn't a punishment because you're likely gonna be using a Bali rune, which I'll talk about in a minute here, to be max SP every single turn. With this set, you can just hit 74.5% evade without using an accessory or any other mythics or ancients. Just by using this individual set, mythic enchants and mythic runes. That lets us go ahead and open up builds that allow us to have other mitigation or even start being a DPS ourselves. To show you these evade enchants, each one of these will give you 2.5%. With the Witcham bonus, each one is 5%. So you have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 of them. You get 30% evade just from your enchants. Then moving into runes, you get 3, 6, 9, 12. Just from those runes. It, it's so strong. For your middle rune here, I don't have a great one. You'll probably want to use a core rune that gives you the bonus to healing when you're low health, but I just have the first attack on your opponent deals 30% increased damage to give me a little bit more DPS output. For this rune here on the right hand side, a 5% chance when you get hit to ignore office offensive bonuses. The Melgu rune is probably the best one you can have here. It means that if they were going to empower or crit or even cast Braveheart, you have a 5% chance to just ignore it. I mentioned the Bali rune earlier, 
that's this one. You have a 30% chance when it's mythic that when you get hit, you will get one SP. That's why the SP re regeneration really doesn't matter. You're going to get hit so many times, you're going to be at max SP every single turn anyways. So losing the regen, like you could even have it set to 0% regen, you'll be fine. So that's our, a quick overview of our enchants and runes. But let's talk about our ancients. Um, with DPS, ancients are just really nice bonuses, but they're far more important for tanks. I'm only going to go over a couple of them and very briefly, just because they're so expensive, especially to keep tearing them up. The very first one to talk about is Star Weave. It's from tier 9, and it reduces the amount of set items required for a set bonus by 1. You have to have at least 2 items of a specific set. This isn't necessary for the Unholy Trinity, because really all that it's doing right now is replacing the 4th piece of Witchem, which would also take this slot, but it does give you the 5% damage bonus and 5% damage reduction. If, it, if you didn't have it for this specific build, it's not a big deal, but for a lot of other builds it is mandatory. Second is Soul of Ascarium. This one is from tier 16. It's a body. It can also be Heart of Ascarium, but Soul is just stronger, so you just want to use that one. It has a 15% chance to apply an amplifier like Combust for 91% of your power to the closest enemy whenever anyone on your team gets hit. Kind of like a pro tip for y'all. This even procs when you evade a hit. So they go to hit you, you evade it, you still have a 15% chance to Combust the furthest enemy super strong but these together the the witchum the evade the iscarium they're strong but they're not perfect finally the tier 17 ancient 64 bit clover this gives you lucky all random effects are rolled two times for a favorable outcome this just applies luck luck means that if you fail a roll it will roll a second time so iscarium having a 15 percent chance well, if it fails, it rolls again for another 15% chance. Another example is if you had 99% block and you failed the roll because RNG will make you hit that 1% chance often, it's going to roll again for another 99% chance, effectively making it 99.9%. That seems like a small bonus, 0.9%. But look at the smaller numbers. If you have a 75% chance for something, it makes it an effective 93.75% chance. This is so strong just for that bonus. It'll, it'll give you nearly 20% on there. And just like spoiler alert, it affects Iscarium as well. It doesn't affect your pet, but I mean, it has to have some downside, I guess. <laughs> so some popular builds, that I just want to go over a couple of them, or just one of them really quickly, is the one that I have on right here. I'm going to tell you why I chose, what I chose, so you can build it as well. The main hand, off hand, and the head are all gonna be Witchem. This is going to give the full bonus from the set without, or with Star Weave. If you don't have Star Weave, you'll wanna have the ring be Witchem as well. I just already have Star Weave, so might as well use it. The neck is gonna be Clover, which is gonna give you the lucky chances to reroll all of your failed rolls. And then finally is gonna be the body, Soul of Iscarium. Runes and enchants I've shown are already max evade that give me over 90% effective evade from Clover, letting me go into defensive mo or offensive modifiers as well. Generally, you'll want to use a mount called Dracus or Phobet and Phobet as an accessory, which are both offensive gear to increase the damage doled out by Soul of Viscarium and your offensive pet. I don't have those, so I'm using Freegal just because it's the only mythic mount that I have and Monarch's Command to give me the extra dual strike and critical chance on all of my attacks. I do use a defensive pet because a lot of times this is meant for soloing, but it's I, I could put Kolg on there as well and just deal a ton of damage, I just wouldn't be able to heal near as well. This build can solo a ton of content with D6 success, with the exception of some of the more recent content that has augments added in. Pet damage and augment brain damage can bypass evade. So I know this isn't a super in-depth guide, but I wanted to give something similar that I did with DPS with baits and tanks. Going over the basics again quickly, you want to put all of your modifiers into one basket up to whatever the cap is on your modifier. Enough stamina to fit your roll, either as a bait or a tank, the lowest or highest health, and then the rest into power. No speed at all if you can manage it. 
Ancients can make a build go from strong to immortal, which brings back the reason that I usually am DPS. A good DPS deals a ton of damage, a mea DPS deals a lot of damage. A good tank is nearly immortal, and a meh tank is dead. Being a good bait or tank is not something easy as a free player. Again, I do want to thank the wiki team for providing such a good resource and some players that let me poke around and ask them questions about their build. UberGecko, Gilgamesh, and Askeladd all provided great insight into why they do what they do and helped me get much better at understanding the tank and bait life. What would you like to see next? Familiars? Rune rankings? How to be the ultimate gold finding hero? Let me know in the comments below and make sure to subscribe to see any future videos. As always, have a wonderful grind and may RNG forever be in your favor.